Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm installing some equipment at Apprentice One to One Academy. Let's get straight to it. So you'll see behind me here, I've been busy. We've got this set up on the wall. I've time-lapsed it. I'm gonna run through how I came to install all of this here. It's not that complicated, but there's a few new bits you may have spied on the wall behind me. We'll speak about exactly what they do. Let's get on with the time-lapse and then we'll jump back and have a chat in a minute. So we need to measure up for our trunking fair stuff, which you saw me just doing there with the tear. And now I'm getting some tube through this wall into the consumer unit behind just so we've got that path through for the cabling to know we're not going to come into any snags in the wall and we're not putting any single insulated conductors where they shouldn't be so we're just going to cut this tube down so it's going to come through flush into the back of the isolator on this side and you can see just guiding it through into the consumer unit I'm then going to pop on um, a little insert so we can land the lock nut into the back of the isolator so we know that that's going to be securely fastened and there's no possibility of that tube falling out from where it's intended to remain. So just pushing that through the plasterboard so it's nice and snug into the wall. Now we're going to take the isolator and I'm just making sure I'm getting this the right way around. They do all have a marking saying top in the back, so don't make the mistake. I've made many times before and put your hole in the wrong place. You see I've got that done now and I'm just putting some plasterboard fixings in to hold the isolator securely onto the wall. The studs on these are set at 600 mil spacings and the noggins are underneath where we're mounting any of this. So there was no timber there and this was the only option I had available to get this isolator fixed back nice and tight. But it's doing its job beautifully well. So that's securely onto the wall. And again, just check your levels all the way through to make sure everything is going to stay on that wall nice and straight. The bandsaw is absolutely brilliant, but it's not quite deep enough to get through this 100mm trunk in, so I did just have to spin it around. As long as you've made marks to follow and you're reasonably careful with the saw, it cuts through nice and simple. Again, now just popping a little entry hole out of the bottom of the isolator that'll drop into the trunk in, and then marking that up so we can put our holes in before we position this onto the wall. It's always easier rather than trying to get your bit around existing equipment. And screwing the strunk in into the studs and again using screws and washers so we're getting a nice solid fixing back there and that's going to go nowhere screwing the pro dry up now that one's really easy there's just a couple of screws off the brackets either side and make These sure you keep it level are mint you can fasten them without needing to use a lock nut they just grab on inside after you've slotted them in and then they're ready to go so that's a very useful feature so now we're going to get the cables up through those highlight plans and make sure we're leaving plenty of length. So if there is an issue and we need to adjust any of the cabling, this could well end up moving around once the inverter and battery storage turn up. So I wasn't cutting anything excessively short. That's the same on both the AC and the DC side. So we're leaving some cable loose in the trunking. So if things have to move around, we've got the option of doing that. This is the Hylex Solar Terminating Kit and it comes with everything you're going to need to get that done. A really high quality ratcheting crimping tool so we know our MC4s are going to be securely fastened. There's a whole load of adapters in there as well to help you tighten and remove MC4 plugs. We absolutely love it. We've been using it on every single solar job we've been to so far because everything you need in terms of your MC4 is within it. You can see they're getting it nice and uh, securely clamped onto the DC cable and then make sure we're tightening up appropriately the gland on the back. We're going over that with the appropriate tooling to ensure that they are properly tight. And then we plug them onto the input side of the ProJoy so we're making sure we get those in the right place. And now we're moving on to the AC side. You can see me popping the cables through to our main AC isolator for the inverter. So we've got our CPC there and again that's coming through with singles from the consumer unit straight into this isolator so we've got our input input feed now these isolators are on the small side i didn't have another of the um, 
Skame isolators to use. The Jiwis ones are brilliant as well. They tend to be a bit more roomy, but these ones we had on the shelf are a little bit tiny, so it was slightly more difficult than it otherwise needed to be. An easy way to get around that is to spec an oversized isolator. So sometimes just going for the 63 amp isolators, whilst the terminals end up a little bit on the large size, you can always use ferrules or appropriately double over your ends to get a secure connection. And it just gives you some more wiring room and it'll make life a little bit easier because these things are not the most installer friendly products out there in my opinion. And we see with this one, we've popped the um, switching body into the isolate housing and I was looking at bringing the cables all the way around and looping back into the top just to leave a bit of excess, but it really wasn't gonna work based on some of the other wires that are gonna come through this isolator. So I decided to just double them back in the top and then drop straight down into the input terminals and the point of note on these if you've never used them before the t denotes the output side and the l denotes the input side so you'll have l1 2 and 3 typically with your neutral in your earths and then a t1 2 and 3 so l is the input and t is the output you see they were just stripping off these conductors these are six mil singles and they're coming through our conduit that's glanded into the back of this and also straight through into the consumer unit the other side and we will go and have a look at that in just a minute so we're getting those nicely connected in now uh, make sure there's a firm and secure connection we don't want any loose wiring on any of this stuff so we're making sure that's done up nice and tight so we're now pushing through our ac feed for the pro joy and this is just to power up the ac isolator so when it's operated the ProJoy will shut down the DC strings and I am wiring through the main AC isolator for the PV inverter. Not normally a fan of taking cabling through one piece of equipment to reach another but in this case it was just easier and I think in the end some of this is going to shuffle about anyway. Same principle, make sure you're getting your terminals nice and tight. This isolator was a little bit more generous on room which was nice. And then we're just getting our front covers on so we know everything fits back as it should before we start any testing of the circuit and point of note with these is they should be uh, capable to be used outside but if you're going to use them outside never gland in the top you can see in the consumer unit the conduit comes straight through into the back we've got our 220 amp rcbos in the end the rcbo for the inverter can be upsized but for the minute it's quite okay on that 20 amp circuit so this here from ProJoy is a DC isolating safety device. It works in a couple of unique ways. You install it as close to the PV array as you possibly can. So if you're on a ground mount system outside, you'd get it close to the panels. Or if you're on a domestic job, typically you'd install it in the loft. Now these work in both an automatic mode and via manual shutdown. So if the temperature rises above 70 degrees Celsius, they will disconnect the array to the strings leading down to the inverter which is useful if, for example, a fire's built in the loft to know that they're gonna automatically kill those cables off leading around the rest of the property. So if firefighters are coming in doing their stuff, they can have reasonable confidence that the only live parts will be those attached to the roof structure itself, which is really useful. Now you can also install an AC isolating switch, which would enable you to activate this at a remote point. So typically you'd put it around your PV inverter, for example, or at the main intake, somewhere where it's obvious to a firefighter who's maybe coming in wanting to switch off the array on the roof. And again, if we isolate this here, I don't know if you can hear that on camera, but a motor's swinging into action inside this device, and it's now opening those DC connections from the input to the output. Now at the minute, we've only got the input cables leading into this anyway, and we are indoors, however, once we've got this up and running with the battery system and the inverter, we can demonstrate exactly how it works in a bit better detail. Now again, when you're turning the power onto this, the motor swings back in and makes the connection for the DC in and out. When you first power this up, there's some capacitors in char in inside and they need to charge themselves up before they will then move that motor. So you have to give it a minute or so on its first use if you've had it switched off for a while just to allow the capacitors to charge to then run that motor over and make the DC connection. As you can see, it's done inside there. Very detailed instruction manual with it. Um, there's not really too much to, to highlight other than really to say about the automatic shutdown. So you see I mentioned about that and then how you can have um, an AC power cut that will also activate it. So if the power's tripped, 
it will shut it down as well and you can do it manually as I just demonstrated in that instance. Tells you how to mount it, basically just a couple of tabs that pull out the side and then you screw it to something reasonably solid. Um, you can wire in an external power light indicator, so if you're wanting to put a remote indicator, because obviously this is going to live in the loft, if you wanted to wire in an indicator near the PV um, inverter, then you can do that as well. Um, otherwise, you can see how it, how it works. It, it sits straight onto the AC supply through the emergency stop, and then you've got this with the array straight into it. Now, I've wondered about fitting a DC isolator local to this, so if you ever needed to replace it, for example, you can cut the power to the strings safely. I think that makes logical sense, but it is more terminations, and we know that in the PV install, it's the terminations that are generally the weak spot. So it's one of those where there's a trade-off in safety in one direction to gain some safety in another. Equally, you can isolate the inverter, you can isolate the um, ProJoy, and then if you've got optimizers, for example, on your PV array, you can still disconnect them in relative safety. So I think it's one of those where you'll have to risk assess yourself during the install. If you're using strings that are gonna carry a few hundred volts, it's well worth considering a DC isolator onto the input of this, just in case you ever had to replace it or do some maintenance on it or whatever. You've got a point of isolation rather than just pulling the MC4s. I guess you could factor into your work schedule that you would go and do it when it's dark. But that's not very convenient, is it? So I think putting a DC isolator in there makes good sense if they are strings carrying high voltages and not through optimizers. Let's move on with it. You can see what we've got here is our main AC switch for the inverter. I've still to label all these up. I'll pop some labels on in a minute and show you it um, all closed up. But that is going to kill power to the inverter. So if anybody comes to work on that, they can turn that off and it shuts the inverter the battery storage and all of that good stuff down so they can work on that safely. There's an, uh, also an isolator adjacent to the distribution board, just the other side of this wall. So if somebody's doing any work on there, they can isolate as well. In this environment, it's really a much of a muchness because there's no solar generation taking place. We are indoors. I say no solar generation. There is a little bit because of the skylights. So who knows? We may get some generation. We shall see. And then this one here is just the emergency isolator for the um, ProJoy which would typically be living up in the loft space. I'll just spin you so you can see that. Um, so that's a way of remotely activating this. And we've used a rotary isolator because that's what I had in stock at Apprentice 1 to 1 HQ. You could use a stop button, however you want to do it, as long as it's labelled and it can be operated. That's all well and good. As you can see up there, we have our strings coming off the roof. They drop down this bit of conduit and then we're running through our trunking. Now I've tried to keep the DC and AC cables separated as much as possible. There's obviously still some more cabling to go in here, but my intention is to run the AC along the bottom of the trunking and the DC along the top. Now all these cables are rated to be inside the same containment, so I don't think it's a, a huge issue having them combined as long as you're labeling the trunking to let people know what's in there. And anyone who's coming to work on it should be aware of what's going on anyway. So I'm going to move along and put some list stickers and labels on stuff and then I'll finish this one up for the time being. So we've got some labels onto the bits of equipment now. So we've got our live DC cables on the trunking sticker. We've also got our um, solar PV system point of emergency switching. I'm not 100% happy with that label because it doesn't actually describe in great detail what it's doing. Um, but you kind of get the gist. And then we've got the main solar PV system main AC isolator. So it can get a bit confusing around these, so I'm going to have a look at some of the labelling on that just to make it crystal clear that that is the emergency switch for this. So maybe do a bit of rewording on that one. Um, and then, like I say, we're about done. I've got the trunking lid all cut and ready to go. So that just needs to go on there once we've put all the cables in, but there's no point doing that yet because it's not finished. So just to run through some of the tools I've used in putting this all together, there's the Milwaukee M12 bandsaw. These are brilliant if you're up on the roof cutting your rails down. They do an absolute fantastic job off that. But I've used it on the trunking. I've used 100 by 50 trunking here. I think it's a bit overkill for what we're actually doing, but um, it's what we had on the shelf and we have to make do here at Apprentice 1 to 1 Academy. We're on a limited budget and we use up what we can. So we've done that here and it just about got through it in one cut, just had to spin it around and finish it off, but really nice, neat cut every time. There is also the Hylek MC4 tooling. 
So this is the little kit they do. I've shown it before on the channel, but you've got some VDE snips to cut your cable in. We've got the stripping tool and we've got the crimping tool in there as well. A good quality one, a ratchet in, um, decent quality bit of kit. And then it comes with a few different bits and pieces for making off your MC4 terminals and tightening them up securely and safely. So that's really good. And just a point of note that if you're using MC4 connectors, don't mix your brands. This um, ProJoy came with a selection of MC4 connectors and I'm keeping those with it because it's important that the pairs do match up. So when you get your inverters as well and your batteries, they all come with plugs and um, crimps that are applicable to them. So don't just cast them aside and use the ones you've got in your tubs. You do need to use the matching um, manufacturers. Don't mix them up. Um, apparently that's a big no-no of MC4 connectors. And as they are the things that tend to set fire most often, it's worth taking note and trying to do it right at the outset. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. If you've got any questions in and around it, please do let me know in the comments. We're still waiting on this battery and inverter, so I'll get a follow-up video alongside this when we're installing, commissioning, and testing that. Until the next time, I'll see you then.